How do you take a vision and turn it into reality? You start at the beginning. You build until things come alive. The building turns into becoming. The becoming begins to transform. And now you've reached the moment when you become the movement. So how are we doing, movement fams? Woo! Dude, I am so stoked that I get to share with you guys some things that the Lord's been putting on my heart. But we want to welcome you guys today. If this is your first time, uh, any, we got any first timers here? Oh, cool. I, I met you guys earlier. Thank you guys for joining us. It's an honor. We want to just thank um, all the people who is joining us on the Movement TV, on Facebook, um, off of podcasts. We just want to welcome you guys. We thank you guys for joining us today um, in the Movement. We are continuing this, this series in Acts. We're going to continue that on. Um, we just want to give a shout out to Pastor Chris and Pastor Stacy. They are celebrating and they are living it up right now. Enjoying their time with their family on vacation. I think they went to what? Disney World? Disneyland? Disneyland? Ah, those lucky buggers. So, um, so we just want to shout out to them. We, we just bless you guys. Have fun. Come back with those ears. <laughs> um, but today we're going to keep on moving down uh, in Acts. And I want to talk about today, how do we move from just being a move of God, experiencing a move of God, to becoming the movement. How do we transition from experiencing something that happens in a moment to moving into the movement and what God's called us to do? All right, so we're going to pick up in Acts 2, 36, and I'm going to read this. We... we Read in Acts that they have just come out of God pouring himself out over them. And this is the part where they, they experience the Holy Spirit. They start to speak in tongues in, in these languages. And they're hearing this. People from all around, like visitors and people all around the world. They're hearing this. People just speak in tongues. And they're amazed at it. They're like, wow, this is amazing. We're, here, we're hearing our native languages spoken today. And we're hearing about the amazing thing that God is doing. And so people are amazed by it. They're like, yeah, this is crazy. What's going on? Like, what's going on? Can somebody explain it to me? And we picked up over here. Peter steps out and he says this. Let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified to be both Lord and Messiah. And Peter's words pierced their hearts. And they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? And Peter replies, each one of you must repent of your sins and turn to God. and Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you and to your children and to those who are far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. And then Peter continues preaching for a long time. Sounds like some of our preachers. <laughs> I'm not going to say names, but some of us can go for a long time. So Peter keeps on going. He, he preaches to them, strongly urging them to save themselves from this crooked generation. And all who believed Peter and what he said were baptized and they were added to the church that day, 3,000 people in all. So they have just experienced an amazing move of God, right? They like, they just experienced this amazement. Wow, God is real, dude. Like, check him out. And I think we all had that kind of times, right, before where we experienced God, maybe in an encounter, like God starts talking to us, the worship music is going, we're pumped up, and like all of a sudden the Holy Spirit just starts moving in you. You start crying and you start getting 
like that. And you start like crying and you're like, what's going on in me? I don't know what's going on. And like God starts speaking to you, right? Like how many of you guys experienced this before? God starts speaking to you and you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? What? And you realize God is real. And for many of us, we, we have this experience in a moment, right? But how do we take that moment to transition into a movement? Because a lot of times what happens is we'll have this amazing experience. God touches our lives. He starts talking to us. Maybe some of us... Uh, God started talking to us about, like, asking for forgiveness, going and making it right. You know, some of this sound familiar so far? No? Maybe uh, unfriend some people. Maybe leave your girlfriend or boyfriend. Am I hitting somewhere? No? So far? No? Maybe uh, how, about, how about one of these? Like, start, I want you to start praying every day in the morning. Get up early. Or I want you to take a fast for the weekend. Or I, I want you to do this or that. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to do that, God. I'm going to do that. And then next thing you know, life happens Monday morning. We forget to get up early and pray. We're like, oh, man, that's a, that's a junk start already. Okay, God, tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll start praying. I'll, I'll get up early and I'll start praying. And then if you, you're like us, we have like about four kids, maybe, maybe more. And, and you're like rushing for work, got to get all of them ready. The waffles are like burning and all that. And you're like, ah, dude. Okay, God, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just pray later on, tonight, tonight. I'll pray tonight. And you get home tonight and that passes and you're like, oh, my gosh. You know what, I'll just, I'll just start all over next month. We'll just do it next month. We'll start this. And, and we go and it's like. And then what happens, right, after that is you feel this condemnation, you feel this guilt and this shame, and it starts all over again. You're like, you find yourself on the altar again. That's me, yeah. God, forgive me. I repent. I repent. Yeah, that's me. And it happens all over again. You start the cycle, right? How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? Come on. And so today, I was thinking about this, asking God, like, how do we go from the move, a one-time experience, to the movement. And I really felt like God saying, like, there's, there's the biggest thing, number one thing, how to break the cycle, is devotion. We, we encounter God, now what? What do, what do we do with this one-time moment? Because a move happens in a moment. But for us to transition into a movement, it takes dedication and time. In Acts, as we read on, in Acts 2.42, right? They just came out of an amazing experience with God. An amazing encounter with God. And this is what happens after. It says that all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. They go from having an amazing experience right into discipleship, teaching, and coming under the lordship of Jesus through teaching, through learning. And, and you, know what? you know what is amazing? This is what I find. A lot of us, this is where a lot of us get stuck. In the transition between having a movement to getting plugged in, committing to something that is longer than just a moment in time. And so, how, what does that look like? How does, what does that look like, like moving from an experience to getting plugged in? Some of us, it might look like taking time for God rather than um, maybe bowling or something, you know, um, practical things, practical things. I remember um, when I, when God started uh, 
transitioning Lei and I, um, it was amazing because Lei, Lei had an amazing mentor, and she had an amazing person that, that uh, her name is Kristen, her friend, and she would have these Bible studies, right? And she would, like, invite Lei, and I was like, at that time, I wasn't saved at all, like, I was like, yeah, go on, go on. I'm just going to hang out with the boys. We're going to lift weights. We're going to, you know, drink, whatever. We're going to do all that kind of stuff, that fun stuff. And, like, she would come home, right? And she's like, yeah, I, I learned this. This is what I learned. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Until one day, she comes and she goes, hey, um, you know, I've been thinking about this. And I, I feel like we shouldn't be intimate anymore. And I was like, wait, what? Hold up. Like, We've been, like, going out since freshman year. We're like, wait, what? We're like, we've been, we've been doing this for so long. Why stop now, you know? And I was like, it was all cool until she came back with that. Then I was like, wait, hold up. Hold up, wait, what, what, wait, what is this kind of stuff that you're going to on Monday nights? Bible studies? What, what are they talking about, you know? And, and then, not only, okay, it started there. Then the following week was like, I, I think I got to move out. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Move out? Who's, who's telling you these things? <laughs> but you know what? Is, I, I realized that her devotion was changing from me to Christ Jesus. Oh, it's so good. And I couldn't do anything about it. You know why? Because I was devoted to her. But now she's devoted to Christ. <laughs> so I'm kind of stuck in the middle, you know. And I'm thinking, man, I can't leave the relationship. I don't want to leave the relationship. I might as well join her, I guess, right? <laughs> so we, soon after that, we got married. But that's what it looks like for us. That's what it looked like for us. Maybe God is calling you. To get into a, a, a mentorship program. Maybe God is calling you to do something long term. Maybe he's calling you to, you know, uh, quit smoking, quit swearing, I don't know. Whatever it is. God is calling us to move and transition from a non-committed place to something that we need to commit to. And this is just the beginning of it. But it's the most powerful transition that we can do. You know what it does? It actually takes us from when we encounter God, right? God encounters us. The Holy Spirit starts speaking to us and we turn from what we were doing before. You know what that is called? That's called repentance. Repentance actually means to just turn, right? But the thing is, the problem with that, that's great. The problem is that if you do that and you turn, but you don't do that for a long period of time, you don't establish like this, this um, new way of walking, you eventually walk in a circle and come right back to it in a couple of weeks or a month. You'll just keep on doing this. You'll keep on getting in circles. And it's so frustrating because it's like, dude, I thought I dealt with this again. And now I got to deal with this again. And now I'm in the same position that I was in like a month ago. I'm still crying again. Why isn't this changing? And this is the thing. If we got to allow God to take us from repentance, which is a turning of our, or changing of our mind. Again, the moment, the one moment in time. To what it says in Romans 12. It says, you'll be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when it's not a one-time event where you change your mind. But you're renewing your mind constantly. Constantly it's changing. Constantly and we, we need to get that because I think that is such a huge key in our growth. But also, it's such a huge key in what God wants to do in us as the movement. We cannot become the movement if we're just always waiting for a move. And we're waiting for a move and we're chasing, we're chasing people and messages and we're, and we're going out and we're just getting like filled up and all that. And then we return to the same thing week after week. That's not a movement. That's not a movement. So we got to let God 
We got to be teachable. We got to be teachable. Let God challenge your ways. How many of you know that God's ways are not like our ways? <laughs> the way he operates is not like our ways. His kingdom is so different from our kingdom, right? We, we, we stress out. We're like, man, we got to make money. God's all like, oh, you, want mo- you need money? I'll go catch the fish. Go look in his mouth. <laughs> You're like, oh, God. What about this? Oh, we don't have any bread. How are we going to feed the people? God's all like, oh, just, hey, bring the bread, bring the bread here. <laughs> and it just keeps on coming out. You're like, wait, what? It's very different. The way God operates is very different. So what does that tell you about us? We need to learn these things. We need to learn the ways of God. We need to learn what it says in his word. We need to learn... Some of, us, some of us need to learn who we are as, as somebody that is in, is in the family of God now. We've been born again. What does that tell you? We're born again. We cannot comprehend the things of, of the Spirit if we're not born again. But then after that, being born again is not good enough. We need to learn as a child. Right? You'll never enter if you don't become like a child. So there's this process of of God growing us and us allowing God to do it. Everybody with me so far? All right, cool. Man, it requires us to be flexible. I love love, um, sitting in Janet and Rob's um, discipleship also and um, Nathaniel too now. It's so amazing. It challenges my ways. It's like, man, I, I so didn't think that. I so didn't think that. Wow, God, okay. And it has me challenge my ways. Why? Because my ways are not always the right way. But you'll live your life according to what you think. You know that? That's why it's so, ama- it's so crucial that we change the way we think. We repent. It's such a crucial thing in our walk with Christ. I remember um, God, God took me in a moment um, in my walk where he, he would teach me these, these principles, these spiritual principles. And how many of you know that God teaches us spiritual things in our daily walks? How many of you know that? Yeah, he does. Um, it's so funny because a lot of people, because we're in the, in the prophetic and all that, a lot of people come and they're like, hey, like talking to me all like very spiritual stuff. And I'm like, oh, that sounds good. What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> uh, no, um, actually God like just speaks to me like, you know, regular. I don't know what he's talking to you, but he, he teaches me through the, my daily routine. And so like, for instance, I remember God talking to me, and he's like, hey, Dallas, you see that trash over there? And I'm like, yeah. I share this story all the time. This is the only one I have. <laughs> he's like, Dallas, you see the trash over there? Pick it up. I'm all like, all right. No, I'll pick it up. That's pretty cool until like two months later, he's still telling you, pick up the trash. <laughs> I'm all like, God, this is not cool, man. What, are you playing with me? Why am I picking up trash? And I'm over there arguing like, man, God, why am I picking up trash? Until one day. He's like, you know what I'm doing in you? I'm like, no, what, what? Am, I, am I just a trash picker up right now? He's like, no, I'm training you to hear my voice. If you can hear me in, my, in your daily walk, right, pick up the trash, pick up the trash, pick up the trash. When the time comes that I tell you to tell that dead boy, get up and walk, you won't skip a beat. It's the same voice. It's the same voice that's telling you, pick up trash, pick up trash, pick up trash. Tell the dead boy, get up and walk. Pick up trash, pick up trash. You won't lose a beat. Why? Because it's the same spirit. It's the same voice. It's the same. Right? I love it. God is so, um, he is so plain to me. Like, he is very, uh, speaks to me in layman terms, I guess. (laughs) He knows I'm not uh, at all, like, with the big words and all that, you know. (laughs) He's just like, 
caveman rock. <laughs> I'm all like, okay, God, I got it. <laughs> but it's your devotion. That's where, that's where you're going to get a lot of change. Transformation happens in the long term, in our commitment. As we commit to getting fed by these amazing teachers, as we allow God to transform our lives by the renewing of our mind, by his word, by the washing of our words, we realize that this is true transformation. This is where it takes place. And it's, it's necessary for us to go through that. I remember, um, too, another thing is God will always call us to commit to, to growth. I remember, and, and you know what the amazing thing is? It'll, it'll call you to stretch yourself beyond what your comfort zone is. He'll call you to prayer every day. He's like, hey, I want you to go to pray after work every day. And the, and the thing is, I, I love my kids. I want to spend as much time as I can with them. So I'm stretching between God calling me to prayer and my kids, right, and spending time. And it's always going to be like that. It's always going to be like that. God is going to stretch us in ways that we don't want to learn. We don't want to put the time in. We don't want to commit to. But it's part of our growth. Continue on, continuing on in Acts 2, verse 43, it says, A deep sense of awe came over them. Came over them all. And the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met in one place, and they shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared their money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. We move from a place where God is changing us personally to now we move and we become the movement, an army of people with one heart and mind. It says over here that they, they met in homes. They, they, did, they didn't only meet in the temple to worship God. On Sundays, they met in homes. They had supper together. And it says that they broke bread together. I, I was thinking about that. Like, why, why, why would you eat supper and then break bread? Like, if you're like me, you just get the supper with the bread. And you just get the bread and you just go like this and eat the whole thing, right? You just you dip it in the sauce and you dip it in that and you dip it in this and eat the bread, right? Together. But what I realized, the point that God was making is, you have supper, right? You share in that fellowship. But the breaking of the bread, you know what I realized? This is what it was. It was the model that Jesus modeled to the disciples. And now the disciples are modeling to the new believers. You remember when Jesus would break bread with them? They would be the 12 of them. And this is the time of intimacy where the things that Jesus taught, the things that, the hard questions, the hard things that he taught, wouldn't be released to the people, but it would be in this confined area where it's just the 12 of them. Then they would be like, Jesus, what did this really mean? What do you mean when you said this? And he would teach them in the small group setting. He would break the bread, right? One loaf of bread, break it off to each one of them. Break it off to each one of them. And I'm reminded about the times that they were what they did in a small setting, right? When it came time to feed the 5,000, you know what is amazing? What you do in secret will eventually be out in the open. What they did in the secret in breaking of bread, when it came time for them to move in community and in the public, they did the same act. He took the bread, he blessed it. Then he started breaking it off and giving it to the disciples. And the disciples handed it out to all the people sitting out. 5,000, get this. Not only that, they brought back all the pieces later on. You know what that tells me? The bread, the breaking of the bread will always be enough, more than enough 
for everybody. The intimacy that you have, that Christ wants you to have in him, bringing you close, breaking the bread, intimacy, will always be more than enough. There will be leftovers, baskets leftovers, from what you think is the little that you start off with. It's more than enough. It says that they, they had one thing in common, that they shared one thing in common. It's, it's the same mindset. It's the same vision. It's the same purpose that these guys had. And when, what I realized too is church wasn't a single day. You know why? Church is not a building that we meet in. We are the church. How do we go from the community to out in the world and beyond? It's when we change our minds. It's what, when we start to believe what God intended us to be, who God intended us to be. When we realize that the church is not the four walls that we meet at, Church happens every day because we are the church. We are the church. Just like the kingdom is not an actual place. You cannot say the kingdom is here or the kingdom is there. The kingdom is among us. What does that mean, the word among? When you look at it, it's actually within us. So the kingdom happens when we respond. Jesus said it like this. He would heal people and he'd say, hey, don't forget. The kingdom of heaven is near. It's actually right here. When we start to enact what God calls us to, when we start to display the kingdom, we can say that is the kingdom. This is the kingdom. This is the movement. The movement is not the church right here. The movement can be worldwide. The movement can be in China at the same time that it is in Africa and here. Why? Because the movement is not a building. It's us. We are the movement. And it happens when we respond to what God is calling us to do. We cannot stay in its four walls as the movement. The movement happens every day in our workplaces. The, ha- the movement happens in our houses. And, and again, carrying the same models that the disciples took from Christ and now they're duplicating to the new believers, raising them up. Why? So they can do the same all over again. All over again. If we can have the, the worship team come up again. The movement is you and I, but the movement, is and always will be the model of Christ and what he calls us to. So I want to ask you guys today, where are you guys at? Are you somewhere in the transition of experiencing God? And not really plugging in yet? Or are you at the point of you have plugged in, but you haven't been a part of community yet? We have amazing um, opportunities for you to get plugged in. Uh, Dart and Tasha here. They have the engaged communities where you can plug in. You can, you can take part in what God is doing as, as the movement family grows and as the movement family helps each other, they have these amazing opportunities. We have classes. We have these amazing times where it's outside. It's barbecues. Who loves barbecues? I mean, all of us do, right? Yeah. Dart guys will be putting on more barbecues. <laughs> 
But it's a chance for us to share, take part, not only in church, in, in Sunday, but we want to be the movement every day. Every day. It requires us to change our minds that we're, we're not going to be stuck in here. We need to see beyond this. We need to see people out. There's people out there who's experiencing stuff that we've experienced or worse. What does it mean for us to be the movement outside of our community? Is paying attention, being attentive. When people are reaching out to you, when people are lost, when people are crying, reach out to them. Reach out to them. Don't bring them to church. Don't, don't, don't say, hey, give me your number. Come on Sundays. No, be the movement for them right there. Remember, it's part of our mind shift. It's part of our mind change. You are the movement. You don't have to wait till Sundays. You don't have to wait till, oh, come, come next month. We're having an amazing conference that will tell you how to move out of addictions, that will tell you how to move out of pornography, that will tell you how to fix marriages, that will tell you. No, we are the movement. We are the movement. We are the movement. I just love that sound. We are the movement. <laughs> I was thinking how In my life, I've, we've come so far. And it's like, I've watched God do so much things in my life. In, in healing my areas in my life. The brokenness in me. The needing the neediness in me parts where where my mind was just not thinking right and God transitioned me it took years but he transitioned my mind my thinking what are we thinking I tell you what, when you start transitioning into the movement, people will ask you, what are you thinking? Wait, you're leaving your job to do what? To help the homeless? What? You're, you're, you're moving your house so, so that you can be where? To what? House people? You're leaving your house so you can house people. You're moving your house so that you can be closer to an organization that you're helping? Are you out of your mind? Yes. I'm out of my mind. I'm out of my mind. I don't have my... I'm not thinking straight. Yes. I have the mind of Christ. I'm thinking straighter than ever. You're doing what? You're, you're taking the time that you, you could spend with your wife and kids to pray on a beach? Why? I gotta know my father before I know my wife and kids how can I be a father to my kids if I don't even know my father I, 
tell you, these times on the beach has made me the best father ever. It taught me so much more than I could ever imagine. <laughs> the latest was I, I was I was praying on the beach again, just not too long ago. And this was what the Lord told me. Listen to your wife. <laughs> I said, okay, Lord. <laughs> She, he said, yeah, she knows better. She knows more than you. I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> I said, tell me something I don't know. <laughs> he said, listen to your wife. I said, all right. <laughs> Whatever the transition you're in right now, I want to pray for you guys. Please stand up, guys. I know this one thing for sure. Wherever you're at, doesn't matter what the transition that you're at right now, the time period. But what matters is your commitment. The commitment is a, is a period that we need to focus on. Some of us, it might be a few months. Some of us might be a, a few years. Whatever it is, we need to commit. I think about the disciples and, and Jesus, and he's like, I love it that Jesus calling the disciples, right? He just tells them, come follow me. He doesn't even tell them what they're up, what they're gonna be going against. <laughs> he just says, come follow me. And they're like, alright. But it's in the process that he starts to mentor him, mentor them. Three years. Mentorship. I can just see some of the crazy things. Peter running his mouth again. God, we should just call down fire from heaven. Sounds like me sometimes. Hey, Pastor Chris, let's just call down fire. They're not listening. And I can just see Pastor Chris. No. No, don't do that. He's like the guy from X-Men, the bald guy. No. Don't do that. Whatever the transition period you're in right now, it'll take your commitment, your sacrifice, your yes to stay in there. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't get part of it only to be a move. Father, we just thank you that you have called us the movement worldwide without boundaries and walls, Lord, to hold us. You have given each one a specific task, Lord, to do. You have called us to not only follow you, not only be a believer of you, but be, be a disciple of you. We thank you, Lord, that you called us each one of us have a purpose in you each one of us has a voice has something to share for the world to hear because we've experienced you we've experienced tangible change in our lives because of you we thank you father that you will help us through you will help us in this transition, God. You call us to say yes. Each one of us, Lord, we ask, Holy Spirit, that even now, you will begin to speak to our hearts. What does it look like? What does our, look, what does our yes look like for each one of us? What is it that we're saying yes to, Lord, that we will not back down? That we know that this is just a call in the transition, Lord, to becoming the movement. I like what it says in the last part. It says that daily people were added. Daily people were added. Why? Because we cannot shut up of what God is doing. We cannot keep quiet of what God is doing. We cannot keep it to ourselves anymore what God is doing. We have
have to. We have to go out. We have to share the good news. I have to speak. I have to testify of what God is doing in our lives and the change that He has done. I have to talk about our testimony. I have to talk about what God took me out of the transitions. I have to. Why? Because somebody is waiting to listen. Somebody needs to hear it. Somebody needs to hear it. To this week, somebody needs to hear your testimony. This week, somebody needs to hear the good news. This week, somebody is going to be on your mind that you should start reaching out to. Somebody's been saying, God, speak to me. Tell me. Tell me, Lord. And I, I feel like God is saying, I've already told you. You step out and do it. You be the movement. You move. And watch me start to add. Watch me start to add. I love that Peter had an opportunity. God did the miracles. Peter did the opportunity. He took the opportunity. God will start to work miracles when you start the testifying. God will start to move in people's lives and He wants you to follow through with the message of salvation, the message of transformation, the message of what God did in your life. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. I've already told you. I've already done it. What are you going to do? What are you going to do, movement family? What are you guys going to do? What are you going to do about it? The homeless situation, what are you going to do about it? The children that are hungry, what are you going to do about it? The people that are struggling with depression, what are you going to do about it? The ones that feel like nobody's seeing them, that they're not heard. What are you going to do about it? Don't wait for the pastors. Don't wait for the evangelists. God is waiting on you. What are you going to do about it today?